Hello and welcome back to another Mountain Blade Warband video. As usual, a big thanks to all the new subscribers and everyone for their continuing support of the channel. It's much appreciated. But if you are new to the channel, please make sure to like, subscribe, comment and turn on the notifications so you can see the latest videos as soon as they are released. Now on another topic, I have been doing a, lot, a few streams recently and I hope you have noticed and have gone back and watched them or joined me uh, when I have streamed. Uh, the main question here is, when it comes to streaming, what days are best to you all and what time uh, would it be best for you guys to actually have a, watch a stream uh, live and what time zone? So I can try and potentially uh, stream more regularly and at a time which best suits the majority of people. So if you could just leave a comment down below, that would be brilliant. Secondly, in general terms of the game, how many of you do use uh, tactics for battles and what do you do when you do set up for battles? Is it similar to what I will show you or do you slightly set up a little bit differently? Chuck that down below as well. And then as usual, please leave any comments, opinions, questions, anything you want down below. You know that I'll get back to you. You know I'll read them. Thank you very much. Now, the topic for today's video is how to beat the Kingdom of Swadia. Now, this is kind of a bit more of a general terms and to show you how I set up and try and rob the advantage away from the Swadians in the battlefield. Because these are, this is a very good kingdom in my opinion. This is the strongest faction uh, when it comes to having decent lords, um, a decent bit of land, decent units. Obviously, the cavalry is a big factor here, but when you do actually you know start to crumble them down the lords do start leaving or be getting done for treasons so these guys are beatable and like i say i'm going to show you my kind of setup when i face them in battle now if you do face them in open ground in open flat ground like i'm about to show you the idea here is to set up a formation uh what i do here is i set up my infantry in a line uh close together in front and put the archers uh, a couple of paces behind at a loose distance. This way the infantry can support each other in a close combat and the archers can start pinging as much as they want in a loose formation, try and make it a little bit harder for Swadian, uh, Swadian range units to try and hit them in a big group. Now these battles are all about timing. The idea here is that you're meant to try and rob them of the effectiveness of their cavalry. Their cavalry is best when they charge at you at range. So here the idea is kind of have a look at what the Swadian Lord is doing with his setup. Are they just approaching bit by bit? If so, can you have several shots at them with your range units? Can you start advancing slowly? To the point where you're going to now just eat up the ground between your troops, your frontline troops and the cavalry. That is the idea here. Is we need to close the ga gap between the units. We're going to try to rush them so that their cavalry doesn't charge off in effectiveness. Because the Lord here isn't going to try and scatter his units and break them up. He's going to try and engage you all at once but allow his cavalry to actually get a charge in first. Now my idea here is that I'm actually going to charge in. I'm going to rob that ground between us so then if their cavalry does start moving they're not going to get a charge bonus when it comes to hitting my troops thus my actual melee troops can get around their cavalry when they're all stood still and take them down that is the idea here and that is what i have done you should still be wary of how many range troops they do have because usually the swadians bring in quite a lot of range troops and having quite a few of them pinging at your troops will take your numbers down quite quickly. But if you've got a little cavalry unit of yourself, I would usually have a couple of cavalrymen if I uh, wasn't playing as the Kingdom of Nords. And I would actually be have some cavalry. I would set my line in formation. I would take the cavalry units with me, get the, cavalry, get the melee troops to charge in to swamp their cavalry, use my cavalry to attack their range units like you would in medieval times. Now for any kingdom to be effective on the battleground, uh, when you're against a kingdom with strong cavalry like the Swadians or the Saranid Sultanate, the hillier the terrain is, the better for you. And I mean, when we say hilly, I mean really hilly. To a point where 
their cavalry cannot get a charge whatsoever even if you're sat up on a ridge somewhere something like that means that if you've got a good strong units of range units and foot soldiers you should easily be able to swamp them especially if you've got uh, experienced range units who can hopefully can ping out their range units and grind them down but for something like this you've just got to be clever when you're in the open ground the swadings can and will have good armies and like i say if you allow them to charge at you uh, and your troops they can wipe out a decent portion of your front line quite quickly and quite rapidly if allowed to do so now when it comes to the kingdom of swadia territory the territory itself is long and thin when they start so when i try and take on the kingdom of swadia i try and concentrate uh, my attacks on the most outer bit which is the kind of region around dirim uh, Dirim usually is quite a easy town to target early on and to take. It usually is one of the towns that they lose straight away, just like Uxcal to Rodox. It is two of the towns that you could take and then it exposes the surrounding castles. But because the Dirim is obviously on the furthest away spot and usually because the Rodox are at war with the Kingdom of Swadia, it is a good area to surround, take, and take the territory of the castle surrounding it. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier. And like I say, once the Swadians on the back foot, usually they have quite a lot of treasonous lords that then abandon them. Um, then also quite a few lords get in indicted for treason and they start losing momentum. Even though they've probably got some of the best units in the game and some of the best territory, they can be crumbled quite quickly and quite easily. Now, when I'm at war with any faction, I go into battles. If I feel that is, it is more beneficial to me, I usually try and keep the lords I captured, especially Swadians. That means that they can't go back off and start recruiting a new warband. So I try and hold on to them as long as I can, at least and obviously until the war is over or if I get a decent amount of money for them. I do try and keep a, you know, tr keep hold of every single Lord I do have. Like I say, unless I get a good enough payout for it to be worth letting them go back to uh, the Kingdom of Swadia and start recruiting again. Like you've just seen then, it is still a very dangerous uh, kingdom to go against even in broken ground broken enemy attacks their lances from their cavalry units are absolutely deadly like you've just seen there so even when you've disrupted the initial charge you really need to focus your infantry troops on really bogging down grouping up that cavalry and just taking them down as quickly as possible to make them as least effective as possible Let me know down below how you try and deal with the Kingdom of Swadia, if it differs a little bit to what I try and do, or if you have a different opinion, or you think I've missed something completely, please put a comment down below. And if you have made it this far into the video, thank you very much for watching. It's a bit more of a kind of basic, obvious kind of detailed uh, video, but it's got a couple of good battles in it. And especially I show you what I try and do when it comes to taking the Swadians on head on in open ground and flat ground. So like I say, thank you very much for watching. If you are new to the channel, please make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Turn on the notifications so that you can see the latest videos as soon as possible. Thank you very much for watching.